Bug and welcome back to my channel. So it's usually around this time of year where I do my videos updating you guys about my progress in dance, ballet, and modern dance. But this year has been kind of crazy as we all know and um, I've had some injuries that have prevented me from doing dance on my own. So we're not getting that video this year. I'm gonna try and do one for maybe spring. But for now, what we're doing today is I'm at I'm answering your guys' frequently asked questions. So I went through all of my dance videos. I looked at every single comment, comments I've answered before and comments I haven't answered. And I compiled a list of questions. These are all my questions. There are 12 of them. So these are all the frequently asked questions about starting ballet as a teenager slash adult. Our first question is, is it too is blank age too old to start ballet? So I get questions about ages from 12 to like 20 plus and my answer for you guys is no you're never too old to start ballet whether it's just for fun you want to do something new you want to do it professionally i don't think you're ever too old to start ballet or start anything new it can be difficult depending on like your skill level beforehand but it is entirely possible. My second question is, can I restart? So this is like people who are saying, I did ballet when I was like four or five, but I didn't really stick with it, whether for money reasons or just didn't like it. But now I'm really into it again and I want to restart. Is it too late? Uh, this is easier to answer than the previous question because you already have a background in dance and your body remembers that. It's called muscle memory. So you may not remember it, but as soon as you get started again, your body's gonna be like, oh, I remember these moves. I know how to point my foot. I know how to like get into the position. So it may be hard when you first start off, but then as when you go to classes over and over again, your body's gonna start remembering it more and you're gonna advance a lot quicker than someone who has never done ballet before. My third question is, is it too late to be good? And this is entirely dependent on the person. It really depends on how much work and effort you put into it. You can go to classes seven days a week and not be any good because you just don't care about it. But if you're really passionate about it, you practice at home, you do all your stretches, you do your bar work, you practice the variations, you could be incredible. It doesn't matter if you've had past experience before in ballet, this is your first year, you can get really good if you practice really hard. I know it's like, I just wanna be good without doing anything, but ballet is very, very challenging. This is the type of sport you have to practice with. Um, my fourth question is, can I go professional? Is it too late to go professional? And this is a little bit complicated because it really depends on your disposition as a person. Cause you can be incredible at ballet, but if you don't have any uh, skills in auditioning or confidence in yourself, then it is too late to go professional. Learning how to audition is very hard cause you have to get used to people analyzing every single detail of you. And like, not just details about ballet, like they will analyze your body, your facial expressions, just the way you look. And it can be honestly really degrading. So if you don't have the mental fortitude to do that, it's gonna be very difficult. You can practice with auditioning, ask like your friends or family to give you critiques. You can um, ask anyone to help you give critiques. Like that's part of me doing stuff online is I get critiques from you guys. So it helps me do better in like auditions. But to go professional, you're gonna have to audition. It doesn't matter if you are the top of the top ballet person or just brand new, everyone has to audition. Like this happens in acting all the time. Leonardo DiCaprio still has to audition for stuff and everyone knows Leonardo DiCaprio, but it doesn't mean he's good enough. And another part of going professional is it's really hard to like join a company or like a show if you're not part of a studio. And being part of a studio is hard because it's very expensive. There are studio fees, classes fees, outfit fees. There are so many fees for being part of a studio. There are of a, are there of are there are of course scholarships, but 
everyone wants a scholarship, so it's hard to get those scholarships. But the reason why I'm saying you should go into a studio is because studios have connections. It could be one of your classmates, your teachers, the studio as a whole, but they will show you where to go to auditions, how to audition. They'll put your name in people's mouths and like say, oh, this person is really good. You should consider them for this show. So to go professional is very hard, but it is possible. Starting as an adult, it's possible, but there are a lot of things you need to already have in you as a person. You need to be able to take criticism. You need to be able to t be told no. You need to be able to present yourself and market yourself. And it's very, very highly recommended that you're part of a studio if you want to go professional. Uh, next question I get asked personally is how much do I practice or how much do you need to practice? So personally, when I did ballet, I did it at my community college. So I had classes two times a week. And then when I did ballet and modern dance, I had cl classes four times a week. So for ballet, I had class Monday and Wednesday for like an hour and a half maybe an hour so it wasn't a long time at all so it was really important for me to do bar stretches and practicing all my variations on my own otherwise I wouldn't have improved at all because an hour is not a lot of time to learn everything to practice everything to work on your technique so it was really dependent on me to take what I learned in class and apply it and then when I did modern dance with ballet, I had uh, ballet Monday and Wednesday and modern dance Tuesday and Thursday. So that was very physically difficult on my body because that's a lot of dance a lot of times during the week. And then on top of that, I was practicing on my own. So that was a lot. But in general, I would say, I know you're not going to like this, but you should practice every day. Whether it's just stretching or bar work, you should do that every single day if you want to be good. If you just like want to do something for fun or like you want to exercise, you can like do it every other day, but you should be doing it pretty consistently, especially just because you want to get it into your muscle memory. Like you want your body to remember it. You don't like have to mentally remember it, if that makes sense, but like you should just go through the motions. Something I find very helpful, I used to do this in Taekwondo is it's practically meditation, but it's like visualization. So Say you have a variation, you're just gonna wanna sit comfortable, close your eyes and go through the variation start to end. Like walking onto the stage, waiting for the music to start, doing it, like visualize every single aspect of it. And then after you're done visualizing, physically do it. Then go back to visualization, physically do it. That is like how I got gold medals consistently in Taekwondo. I haven't tried it in dance cause haven't been able to go on stage yet cause of everything but it, it helps it really does so if you don't have time to physically practice mentally practice this one is hands down probably one of the top questions i get asked is do you need to have dance experience off the top of my head the answer is no but it is very helpful if you have dance experience so me personally, I went into ballet with a lot of dance experience. I had nine years of hula experience before I did ballet. And then on top of that nine years of hula experience, I had um, two years of jazz and two years of hip hop. So that's a lot of dance experience. It's not technical dance experience, like, cause ballet is very technical. That's like the top technical thing, but it was dance experience none nonetheless. And then this is where if you have no dance experience, it will come, you'll be a little hopeful. If you have any sports experience, that's going to come in handy because like it's hand-eye coordination, it's coordination with your body, knowing how your body works. That's very important in dance. So if you have exercise or like sports experience, that's going to be helpful for ballet. But back to the question. You don't need dance experience to start ballet. In my college class, like 75% of the students had no dance experience. They had never done sports before. They have never exercised before they said in class. And by the end of the full semester, so like that's August, <clears throat> August to December, they were great. I don't know how much practice they put in outside of class, but they did it. 
they improved on their flexibility, they improved on their technique, they were just carrying themselves different, they were very poised. So you don't need dance experience to be good at ballet or to start ballet. When you start something new, you don't need anything to start something new. You just need a can't do attitude. <laughs> Next question is, do you need to be flexible? Like the previous question, the answer is no, but it's helpful. It's very helpful to be flexible because, because a lot of things in ballet requires flexibility. Um, so you need flexibility in your arches. You need flexibility in your toes. You need flexibility in your legs. You need flexibility in your torso. You need flexibility in your arms. You need flexibility literally anywhere. Not anywhere, literally everywhere. So I always recommend that before you start ballet to start working on your flexibility. Cause going into ballet cold turkey, like without any flexibility, like you're robotic, is going to be very difficult. It's going to take you a lot longer to improve. It's possible, but it's going to be hard. And on top of everything you're learning, you don't want to be working on your flexibility on top of it. You should always be improving your flexibility, but you want to have some semblance of flexibility to start off with. So I personally have some videos on my YouTube channel if you guys want to get started on that. It's just three basic stretches you can do every single day, literally watching TV that will start improving on your flexibility in your legs, hips, and a torso kind of. But these are really good stretches. I like to do them all the time. So that's something you guys can get started with. So I do 100% recommend to start on your flexibility before you start going to classes for ballet or just looking up ballet videos. Because like just to do bar work, you're gonna need flexibility to like crouch down, go up. It, it, it does require a lot of flexibility. So and that's 100% honest. It's possible, but you'll need some background. So will I be in children's classes? So this depends on where you're gonna take your classes. So where I live, we have adult classes, we have college classes, we have adult classes at studios and gen then just like adult bar exercise classes. So if you're an adult, technically around like 18, 17 maybe, they will take you into those classes. Some of the studio classes, they will take you if you're like 14 and then the, you'll be in your adult classes. For the college classes, you need to be at least high school age and you have to get an exception to go into those college classes, but you won't be with kids. But when you're younger than 14, that's where it gets a little tricky. That's where you have to find teenage classes. Otherwise you're gonna be in kids classes. Teenage classes aren't as popular as adult and kid classes. So you really have to search for them. I would always recommend if you don't find adult classes or teenage classes off the bat, like through your Google search, to always call the studio. Because, especially right now, studios are trying to get more students because a lot of people have lost students because dance is a luxury. So they will make exceptions to get you into the studio. If you are like, say 11, and you don't want to be with seven year olds, you can be like, this is my experience in dance. This is my experience in exercise and flexibility. I want to start taking ballet. What are my options? They may just off the bat say, we only have children's classes for you. You'll be with these age groups um, because yes, a lot of people have left. So they've had to narrow down their classes, but uh, once you reach out, the teacher will know your situation and they will make accommodations for you. They won't, they'll teach you the basic stuff, but they're not gonna treat you like a child. They'll treat you like your age. For adult, it, off the bat, you're probably not gonna be with kids. You're gonna be with your age group because those classes are bigger, like more people take those classes. So you're good there. So kind of tricky finding the right class for you. So you're with, your age group so you just have to you have to be proactive about asking for help when will i get on point shoes so like um some of my earlier questions this is entirely dependent on you you gotta put in the work 
you gotta listen to your teacher this i think if you're proactive about it be like this is my goal tell your teacher this is my goal i want to get on point shoes they will help you get to that goal in my experience it really depends on your teacher at this point too you tell them your goal they'll tell you what you need to do to reach that goal. They'll tell you how soon you'll be able to reach that goal depending on like your skill level and they'll help you work there. Like if they say, oh, you're regressing, you're gonna be taking longer if you keep doing this, then you'll know what to do to get to point shoes. Point is very, very physically taxing and damaging. So a teacher isn't gonna point you, well, a teacher isn't gonna put you on point unless you are ready for it. And you need to listen to your teacher for that because I have seen people who have wrecked their feet, wrecked their body by going on point too early and not listening to their instructor. That's why I'm kind of serious about this because I don't want you guys to get hurt. So you will get on point, but you have to listen and you have to work hard. Okay? Okay. I believe in you though. You'll get on point. You just, please be careful. Next, what do I wear? So this, depends on where you're going to classes. So let's start off with at home. If you're doing classes at home, just wear whatever is comfortable for you. Uh, you're gonna wanna move around a lot. You're gonna be on the ground sometimes. You're gonna be in the air sometimes. So you wanna wear something that you're gonna feel comfortable in. Okay, now for college classes. This really depends on your college instructor. My college instructor said we could wear whatever we wanted as long as it was comfortable and appropriate, appropriate. But it really depends because some college teachers will structure their class as a studio class. So they may say, oh, you need to wear these, this, 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 this. For shoes, I didn't mention this at home, but if you're doing your ballet on carpeted floor, why? And uh, to do it on the hardwood floor, I would just say to wear socks. You don't have to go out of your way to get um, ballet shoes. But then in my um, college class, my teacher recommended either socks, toes, like toe shoes. They're like just a little band that goes in between your toes and on the, uh, what is this, the ball of your foot? Yeah, the ball of your foot. Or to get a ballet flats. For college classes, they'll always tell you on the syllabus day, that's like your first day, they'll be like, so this is what you need for this class. This is what you're going to wear. So don't stress it out about it until you're actually going to the class. For studio classes, that's different. Studios have very strict um, uniforms sometimes. Sometimes, you gotta... I think for the studios around me, you have to wear a black leotard, pink tights, regardless of your skin color, and um, ballet flats. They usually tell you what brand to wear because a lot of the time studios are like sponsored or they have deals with brands, so... This is the type of thing where I would call before you go or talk to someone before you go. Just like, be like, I'm taking this dance class. What is your uniform? What am I required to wear? What am I required to bring? That all can add up. So you gotta call beforehand for a studio to make sure you're getting the right equipment so you're not wasting your money. And for the point shoes, they will tell you when you're ready to go on point, what point shoes are good for you or like what point shoes they recommend. So just listen to your studio or listen to your teacher. Next, how much do materials classes cost? This is where a lot of people have a hard time because dance is a luxury. I'm straight up gonna say it, not everyone can afford dance. It's hard to afford dance. It can be very expensive. So let's start off with leotards. The brand that a lot of people recommend, the most popular brand in my opinion is Capazio, and their leotards go from 20 to $50 and higher. I've seen very expensive leotards. I don't think you need expensive leotards, but like $20 per leotard, I don't know about y'all, but that's kind of expensive. I mean, 20 is normal now, but remember what things used to be ten dollars <laughs> but and then think about it this way you're gonna have like maybe five classes a week so you're gonna need five different leotards unless you do laundry every single night and then um ballet flats they have leather and canvas flats for um i looked this all up on capazio again 
they're like 20 to 40 dollars yeah i think that's right they're not too expensive because these last literally forever i've had my same ballet flats for two years now one and a half year so they last so that's worth the price in my opinion then when you're ready to get on point shoes those <laughs> get ready to wreck your bank per point shoes it is about 80 to 100 plus dollars like 80 is the cheapest i saw on capezio and uh point shoes are something you really want to invest in because like i said you can wreck your body <laughs> so you want to get good shoes for that and um earlier i said to ask your studio about what you should wear because they may have like brands or sponsorships so always ask your studio if you like oh do you have a discount at this store do you have a discount with this brand because a lot of the times they do because they want their um students to wear certain things so like they work something out with the brand and then classes you can there are a couple options for classes i mean the best thing to do is try and get a scholarship but most of the times you already have to be good at dance to get a scholarship or you like have to have a certain situation to get a scholarship they offer scholarships for everyone but it's hard to get because everyone wants a scholarship then you can pay for individual classes so you only pay for what you go to or you can pay for a dance card which will cover like five classes or something it's usually cheaper to pay for a dance card because they do deals on that but a dance card I'm going to use my experience for this, but it's different prices for everyone. Every studio sets their own price, so you're not going to get one set price. For a five-class dance card, it was about like $150 for like an hour class. So five hours, $150. It's not too bad, but it adds up very quickly. And it, I don't think they offer like year round dance cards or like dance subscriptions. So it, it gets expensive because you gotta pay for all your equipment, you gotta pay for the classes and then anything else. Cause some people do on top of regular ballet classes, they do technique classes, flexibility classes, acrobat, acrobat classes. There are a whole bunch of things you can add on top of it, which really racks up the prices. Then when you have, um, performances a lot of the times you have to pay for your own costume and costumes are very expensive sometimes you get to keep your costume so that's kind of worth the price but i don't know when you're gonna wear that costume again and then sometimes the studio keeps the costume because they want you to stay on board and they reuse those costumes so it really it really depends but things do add up so if i think those are my last questions yeah, my last question is, I can't find classes. Classes are too expensive. So I know everyone has different situations. So what I recommend for anyone who wants to just try out ballet and they're not ready to commit to classes at a studio or college or just anyone to try YouTube. I don't have any ballet ballet videos on my YouTube channel. I have some exercise for stretching your legs and stretching your arches so always start off with flexibility but then there are some awesome creators who do ballet and floor work and just teach ballet in general i will link some of them down below go support them i watch them to get some practice at home so yes i recommend youtube there are also a lot of studios who have been switching to online in these trying times so you can see if you want to try a studio around the world if you want to try a studio in your area because you may want to go to that studio once the pandemic is over so look online see what your options are try some stuff out on youtube because if you want to try something on the studio's website you probably have to pay for that or like a subscription so that may get a little costly but it'll be cheaper than an in-person class for sure then if you can't find classes youtube but i would recommend looking to see if your community college has anything because college like universities those are going to be expensive off the bat 
but community college classes are cheaper. And I would recommend community college classes because you get more bang for your buck. You're getting college credits. And in this community, in this society, we need a college degree. And to get your college degree, you need, uh, what are these called? extracurriculars but you need those type of credits you don't just need academic credits to get your um diploma you need more credits than just that so i would recommend just doing dance if you want to try dance anyways or if you're already in dance just do dance it's like easy credits and it works for your money because you're paying for the whole semester you don't have to pay extra fees you don't have to pay for cop costumes, outfits, shoes, most of the time, most of the time, be careful about that. And then you're getting college credits. I had to write a paper, two papers, two papers for my college class. I had to do um, reviews on ballet dances and be like, oh, this is what this movement meant. Or like, this is the story they were telling. It's, it's really easy paper. And I mean, if you like ballet, you're just gonna whip it out real fast. So yeah. That is all the frequently asked questions. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to leave it down below. If you are confused about any of my answers, feel free to leave it down below or direct message me on Twitter or my Instagram. Any of my Instagrams, I'm, on, I'm actually not on Instagram that much anymore, but feel free to message me, I'll check it. I wish you guys good luck. I really hope you try ballet. I hope you find an outlet for your creativity. If it's not ballet, if it's just any type of dance, go for it. I'm always here to support you. If you guys don't have supportive communities around you, welcome. Here's a hug. Here's a kiss. So good luck. I hope you guys are all healthy and safe and you have a great end of year. Bye.